Hello friends! This is Amanda aka She Noted It All on social media and I'm coming at you today with a video to give you 10 tips to kind of help with your travel spreads. Now there will also be a coordinating blog post on the Archer and Olive blog if you want to check that out but without further ado let's go ahead and get into it. Now if you follow me at all you know that I do actually travel a lot so I feel like this is something I have a lot of practice with. So the first tip I'm actually going to give you today comes from my tiny little pocket journal. This is the the journal that always comes with me when I travel. And that first note, I mean, that first tip is just take notes. Take all the notes you can when you travel because the more notes you take, the easier it's going to be to write about it later. I especially like to write down names of places that are very off the beaten path that might not be easy to remember later on. I also write down what I spend. But if the better notes you take, the better your spreads will be later. My second tip today is save everything. We're talking about tickets that you get, brochures. This is from my recent trip to Texas. I took a road trip. I haven't finished documenting yet, so I still kind of have everything in this folder. And I just saved it all, everything that I could possibly want to use in future spreads. That doesn't mean I have to use it. Actually, a majority of the stuff probably won't get used, but just the fact that I have it opens up the opportunity to be able to use it later. Okay, so my third tip today is that if a piece of ephemera that you have collected does not fit in your journal for some reason, either it's too big for the spread or it's too fat and chunky, then just make a copy of it and you can still have it in your journal. I have two on this page, for example. First off was my flight ticket to Germany. Um, it just, the whole ginormous paper ticket did not fit in the spread very easily. So I made a copy of it with my scanner and I made it much, much, much smaller. I can't remember the exact size, but now it fits easily in my spread. And then the other one I did it for was this little guy here in the corner. This was actually like a, a drink coaster from a restaurant we went to in Frankfurt and so it was big it was the size of a drink but it was also fat it was gonna be way way too fat to be able to put it in here so again scanned it into my printer decreased the size and now I had a way to include this memory in my book but it was just in a much more manageable size okay tip number four stickers Stickers from your travel destinations can be a lot of fun, and it's something I like to include in many of my spreads. Um, so I have some examples here. Uh, first, uh, here's a sticker I got when I was in Iceland of Goldfoss. It kind of fills in the paper, gives you a good idea. Uh, I have another one here from La Sagrada Familia in Barcelona. It's just another you know, fun sticker that kind of adds to the element. You don't have to include stickers, but it's really fun to pick them up when you travel and then have a place to put them because, I mean, my water bottle can only hold so many stickers. So to be able to put them in my travel journaling is a lot of fun. I did it over here too with the Amphilmagin. I, I can't speak it very well, but the cool little crossing guy from Berlin. This is a big sticker. It takes up a, a good chunk of the page, um, but it's a fun sticker and it represents it well. So these are a good way to kind of fill some blank space, especially um, if you don't have a lot of other things to put in your spread. Okay, tip number five is to decide on a color scheme, preferably before you go. This is actually really, really helpful if you're going to journal while you're traveling. Because I know for me, if I have too many choices with colors and markers, I'll want to pack them all in. Honestly, that should not be taking up all my room. So before I go on a trip, I usually like to decide on a color scheme. And then I will incorporate that in the cover page like I did here for my trip to Hawaii. But then those colors I decided on, Hawaii actually had more colors than normal for me. But I take those colors and then I incorporate them in the rest of my spreads for that trip. So obviously Hawaii is like bright and fun and colorful, so it's bright, fun, colorful colors. Um, but then I did it in Europe too. I decided I was going to use some more subdued colors with purples and green and orange and yellow. And that kind of went through the rest of my trip there as well. Okay, tip number six is to make 
lists part of your spread. Most of us, when we travel, we like to make lists of things we want to do, things we need to pack. Why not include that in the memories from your trip? So like for here, for example, for my Iceland trip, I put a packing list right here in the front of my spreads. Now, I will be honest, this was not my like unofficial packing list that was nice and messy and horrible. I did make this a little nicer, but yes, I included my packing list. Another type of list that's good to include is sites you want to see. So when I went to Europe earlier this year, I made a list of all the places I wanted to see and the places I was going. And another list is your itinerary, you know, just put that at the front of your trip and it will kind of give a guide for the rest of the trip where you're going and where it was spent. We're going to stick with my spring Europe trip for tip number seven, and that is maps are a really fun thing to include in your spreads as well, whether it be hand-drawn or professionally made. So here I made a map on the first page of where I went just dark orange here were the countries that I ended up going to. Oh, my dogs are playing in the background. <laughs> but also, later on in my spreads, I include maps in other ways. Like here, for Paris, I took a brochure and I just cut out little pieces of maps to include in my spread. So this can be a good way to both document your trip where you were at and a good way to, and fun way to fill up some space. Okay, tip number eight is don't be afraid to cut your ephemera into other shapes. On this page, you wouldn't know it, but these little circles right here were actually from the free postcards that my hotel gave out. So I thought they had a really fun design on them, and I didn't want to include it as the original postcard because it had some weird writing and whatnot on it. So instead, I cut out these little circles and just made them part of the design. And then I did it again later, little squares, to kind of add to the design as well. And then another way I did it was recently back in Berlin. Uh, you wouldn't know it just by looking at it, but these little diamond guys at the top were actually part of the shopping bag from the Apple Mansion store in Berlin, and they're separate pieces. I actually cut them out. They weren't in this pattern. I made this pattern myself, so I cut them out and taped them on here to fill my own purpose. My ninth tip has to do with photos. So that's a question I get really, really often on Instagram is, where I print my photos, how I edit my photos, how I make them so small, do I use like an HP sprocket? Uh, the answer when it comes to the sprocket is sometimes, but typically I actually get my pictures professionally printed. And what I like to do, and this is tip number nine, is arrange them into collages to make them smaller so that I can cut them out into tiny pieces and fit them into this journal, especially this one because it's a traveler size journal, so it's smaller. There are tons of different collage apps out there that you can use to just edit your pictures and make them smaller. As you can see, I don't typically use a four by seven at all. I did here, it already looks like a collage, but for almost all my spreads, I just make my pictures tiny and print them professionally. And finally, tip 10 is just be yourself. Let your experience flow into these pages because honestly, this is for you. This is for you to look back on in the future. So if you try to copy other people too much or, or make it into something that's not you, you're not gonna enjoy looking at it. So add those little elements. Like here, I just, this page needed something more, so I added it in. It doesn't matter that it doesn't look 100% perfect. This is me, this is for me. And I'm going to enjoy looking at these spreads for years to come because I made them authentically me. So there you have it. I hope you found these 10 tips useful. Again, there's a blog post on the Archer and Olive blog that matches this video, kind of gives you an outline of tips, and there will be a free printable as well. So go check that out if you get the chance. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.